Hi everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Well, let's um, start today with our last day of the emotional week of Taurus. And we have only 10 days ahead to finish the whole month of Taurus, which gives us only a month to the end of this path. So for me, it will be really, really fast this next two months for sure. So I hope that this whole week of the um, of uh, the soul of Taurus with the arts has been useful for you. Has been uh, things that you that you learned from something that you were able to learn something, and um, I hope that this will give you some tools for you work in your inside, in your own life. So, of course, that in order to wrap the week, we will speak about the topic of the entire week, which is arts. So, let's talk about art. So, the word art comes from the Latin word ars that comes from the Indo-European language ar, meaning to make, to or to order. We have the Greek word for art also that gives us technique that comes from techne, and this means to weave. That evolved into the concept of beauty. So the reason why technique, the word weave, became into beauty is because for the ancient times, beauty would be all these tissues that we can do, all these um, uh, uh, this, um, mix of materials that you connect, that you weave to one another. So actually the interpretation is that those things that are matching and they are symmetric, harmonic, they become beauty. So that's why the word techne was also known as the word for beauty in Greek. So even though the words are very different, they connect into the concept and the meaning they want, which is that both of them are related to make something and to <clears throat> manifest something with balance and order. Hmm? What is the meaning or the concept of arts here? Art would be basically existence, meaning that arts is what you have within, what is chaotic inside, and then you put it outside by doing something into order, into beauty. Hmm? So actually what arts is describing is how you manifest something from within. So if we go to the universal point of view, we will be able to understand why we relate the arts to the soul. So when we speak about the cosmos, we have to understand that the universe at the beginning of everything is infinite because it's mind. But this mind is not something that has order that knows exactly what to do. The universe is eternal and in the beginning, there is nothing to compare with the beginning and the, and the end. It's difficult to, um, to, uh, uh, to make that, that, um, that separation. So in the beginning, the universe basically is only infinite, which is chaotic. That's a beginning or an end. This is why um, we can understand that the entire universe is willing to manifest itself in order to can experience what it means, um, this infinite that it has. So <clears throat> what it starts to do is to try to put limits. Limits would be alpha and the omega. Limits would be beginning and end. 
So the universe doesn't have patterns when it's only mind because patterns means limitations, boundaries. So it needs to create boundaries in order to put order into that infinite. And this is why within it starts to get outside, creating the first duality that puts order in and out. Okay. The duality puts order a pattern, the first pattern, positive and negative. And by that, it creates energy. And by this energy, it is spread, it is spread vibration through the universe. And that's what we call the soul of the universe. The soul is the one that express and manifest the order for the infinite mind. It turns into a finite that has an end, patterns with an end by itself, <clears throat> so that help the universe to order the entire information. And this is why the soul is the one that enables the um, that enables the um, the universal mind to manifest itself, to find a path within itself. This is why we can relate the soul with the arts, the one that manifests the mind. Hmm? As you can see, the spirit is eternal. So the spirit cannot manifest. The spirit cannot um, find order. It needs the soul in order to find order that creates the pattern that organizes the infinite. So this is why the spirit needs the soul in order to create the patterns that will enable the universe, the, the mind, to live its own experiences through the bodies in different realities. Hmm? <clears throat> so how does the universe to put order into that chaos? By networks. So imagine that the mind is infinite. So in order to put order into that infinite mind, it needs to get links. And that's what we call the networks of the mind. It's like the synapses that creates connections of data that enables the universe to organize different structures. So it has packages of information. Because of this, we will see that the universe uses the webs in order to manifest order in the infinite chaotic mind. And this is why Within networks is what in Greek we say techne that gives you the words tissues, text, textile, technique, technology, and all these kind of words. So technique is the way in which the universe will be able to put order in the infinite. So we can understand that R is the action of manifestation and the technique is the way in which it will be manifested. So throughout time, these networks that are created in the infinite in order to understand the structure, it starts to spread along the entire universe, organizing everything, the organic and the inorganic. So all the structures from a galaxy until a tiny bacteria. Everything in the universe will try now to put a limit into in these networks through a way of weaving nets. Okay, so the universe starts to create organisms and that evolves into new organisms that that keep going, keep going, trying to find the best way to find um, that order. And that's what creates beauty. That's what creates uh, all this uh, reality that we know with all these complex beings like we are. So we can say from this that we, the living beings, we are the universal art the existent universal art 
made up by the technique of the biological um, organism, organic biology. Mm -hmm. We are the universal art, existing universal art. Um, made by the technique of the organic biology. That would be the summary of what we are. <laughs> so we are basically spirits that were infinite and that evolved into any creating the soul and the soul sets a limit that creates the matter that we are. So what we are is the order that the universe needed in order to find the cosmos in the infinite. So as you see, we are not here as lost souls in a world that we are willing to come back to the spiritual world. We are basically the spiritual world trying to find order through matter. So matter Uh, is important. We are important too. It's not just going or going away from here. Uh, this art universe can be also very different from one to another because we have many ways of art. We have organic, inorganic, and from them, it's to bleed into many others and they start to uh, to they start to to divide into other species and the species and subspecies and this subspecies goes into into other uh, races and they start to multiply in speci uh, specifications of each one of the individuals that creates then the cultures the arts that we know, music, dancing, and so on. So it starts to divide, 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 and, and if you see in the universe, it will try to find better order through making incisions. Incisions, which is the word for division, to divide things, to cut things. And the all in the European language, uh, in, the, in the European language and the old languages, um, to cut is said science. Science comes from the etymology to make an incision, to cut something. So science is the one that is able to cut different parts in order to concentrate in the different aspects and areas. So basically, science would be the ways in which you can understand the different parts of the art. So then what we have here is that science dividing the art and the art, which is splitting, both of them are in constant generation, in generation. And because it generates constantly once and again, this means that arts and science both together creates the ingenious ingenious which is the engineering okay and the engineer what would do an ingenious person to make all these parts create a tissue a new net therefore you have technique so as you see here, this is the line. Arts creates or divides itself in science. Science finds ingenious within. And this ingenious used to, in order to create art again. So as I said, art means to do something, to make something. So. Arts is making something, and then science divides the different things that arts did to study and to practice different ways to find within genius many different techniques 
in order to make something new. Hmm? So that would be the, the path. What do we have here? That arts, today we see art in a very different way because for, from our point of view, today arts are related to emotion and aesthetics. Emotion and aesthetics. And these other three are related with the intellect and logics. So why is this? Why it happened that we have been divided, that we divide this and we perceive art as something emotional and we relay arts in just the emotional ideas. And we are much more guided today with a society related to logics and intelligence. Why we split that and we are not a very artistic civilization today. So if we go to the past thousands of years ago until the last period of the Roman Empire, what happened in the whole history was that um, all the knowledge all the things that um, that we uh, learned in in the schools, the initiatic schools that we had in that in that time, uh, remember that they used to teach everything together: art, science, engineering, technique. It was all the same. It was taken as one only thing, mm -hmm. and because of this, um, people were willing to be uh, uh, to have integrity as a, as a being. And to have integrity, you have to know many things, not to go just from one path. That's not uh, the, the way in which you can uh, achieve the whole. You, uh, it's just technique if you go only one path. So that's philosophy. Remember, I will it all the time. Philosophy, love for wisdom. Love for wisdom is that you need to know everything holistically in order to get the whole, the universe. So that's why it was all the same. So in the past, art was for everything, for every action. It was not something that creates something beauty. For example, uh, someone that cooks was art. Of course, that today we can also say it's art, but you, we, will, we would call him or her chef, okay? Uh, but it's not chef, it's, it's, it was anyone who cooked, okay? It was uh, a blacksmith also, whatever. They all did exactly the same. It was action. It was something that they were making. Hmm? So that's why it was art. So whoever achieved to use art, science, engineering, and technique all together, they were able to do what? To use the beauty arts. The beauty arts, which are the essence of every civilization, they were able to use them. Hmm? So to unify them and to make something with that. So with the beauty arts. In the period of Greece and Rome, the development of civilization was according to what we call the birthing of civilization. The birth of civilization is the, um, is the step that uh, creates the basement for the globalization mm, in, in our, in our uh, global cultures. So that's why we call it the, the birth of, of, uh, uh, of arts and the birth of, of our current um, station. Um, so it has um, a big difference from the previous arts. The previous arts were about God and the divine. But in that moment, they decided to do something different. They, they thought, if the divinity has created this, it's because they love this. It's because they, were, they put everything into this. So what we have to do is to 
love the creation. We have been created by the gods and love, they admire us in some, somehow. So what we have to do was to love nature, to love the creation itself. So they design in order to understand every plant, every animal, everything in nature to, to admire our reality, which is completely different from the point of view of Jews and Christians that will come after that. So when the Jews and the Christians started to take the power over the Roman Empire, what happened was that the tradition of God being the most important thing came back. And what they did was to say that the world was hell. The world has been designed by the devil. And all we have to do here is to do the hard work to prove God that we, um, that we deserve to go to heaven. And if we um, love the earth, the nature would be like loving the devil. If we love the things that are here, the earthy things, it's, it's because the devil is calling us through pleasures. So we have to live like poor people, not to have much, not to feel in pleasure at all, because it was something from the devil. Because our goal was to go to heaven. Hmm? This took the cultures to forbid all the arts, because the arts were about honoring nature. So most of the, of the arts were forbidden and forgotten. So during the next centuries in the Middle Ages, for around 400 to 500 years, the cultures of Europe that then spread to the entire world has designed culture based in the hard work in order to win the heaven. So the culture was we have to earn ourselves the heaven by hard work and everything that is pleasure in life will be just something that we would call a distraction in our path. So um, pleasures in life are not good because they take us away from where we are heading to, okay? And this has been stuck for, for um, dozens of, um, of generations in our blood, in our cells. So we keep that information going. And that's why even today we have this kind of beliefs. Even today, even today we have been, um, we have this kind of beliefs. But even though in the 15th century, it came the Renaissance, as we spoke once. And during the Renaissance, kind of we, we stopped, um, or we were trying to leave this uh, sacral arts behind. And we started to bring again the love for nature, for the reality. Uh, during that period, so it was this renaissance of the arts and moving forward, leaving behind this idea of the sacred arts. In the 15th century, with the beginning of arts, behind it came all the old arts, which are what? The science, engineering, and technique. So in the 15th century, towards the 16th century, arts also brought the scientists. So they started to bring a new kind of science in which, of course, Descartes was one of the most important ones that brought the experimentation. The science, the experiment in science. So what happened? We have been gone through a long 
history in which we were ruled by faith, by subjective concepts of reality. So when science gave birth again to a new way of looking into reality, science said we should not follow the same pattern that we have been keeping with the subjective way of understanding through faith. We have to change this into the objective way looking into the experiment and reality. So this said for all of them, we have to split from subjectivity and just be objective in our goals. And that is the beginning of split between us and science. Remember that even though we now have um, arts in the Renaissance and science in the Renaissance, even though we still have within this information from the Christian era that makes us be afraid of everything. So eventually, 17th century and 18th century, the first revolution in, in the Industrial Revolution. And during the Industrial Revolution, what changed the technique? How it changed? Because, of course, before, if there was a shoemaker, the shoemaker was an artist because that person was doing <clears throat> the uh, doing the the whole thing. It was an art to make a shoe. But suddenly, in the industrial time, many people were doing a shoe, and there was no one finishing the shoe. It was machines. It was technique. So. Arts and technique split again. In the engineering, of course, happened the same. Da Vinci, Leonardo da Vinci, and many others of those uh, um, from the Renaissance that not only artists, through art, they were engineers. They designed um, uh, machines uh, that could be used for our daily life. They, they were creating much more than just paintings. They gave the basis for the engineering. But what happened? During the Industrial Revolution, engineering became just as a, a degree. So they were studying just one kind of engineering. And again, arts started to be in the other side. So this is why from the 18th century, 19th century, and 20th century, the artists start to be only relate to the emotional and the aesthetic point. What happened? These three, science, engineering, and technique, through intellect and logics, made humanity evolve as fast as never before in only 300 years, working by themselves, they accomplished to evolve much more than in the last 150,000 years. There is only one thing that humans didn't evolve. What is that thing? Emotion. Emotion. So emotion, art is emotion. And the things that we do comes from emotion. So our insight is the one able to set the intention to manifest something outside. It's our emotion. So technique technology is able to evolve faster than our emotion. But it is just technique. It's just the ways, the shapes, and not the content. So 
why is that? why arts are not evolving and humanity is not evolving through art? Because basically, for sure, many of you have heard this in your life or or in culture, uh, generally in culture, that people say that artists are just people that doesn't really are practical people. Maybe they say um, um, the artist doesn't worth it or, um, or is a loss of time. You have to work hard in order to get things in your life. Maybe um, in life you see the artist like these people that is uh, wasting time. It's a waste of time to do arts. These are thoughts from the industrial revolutions and the kind of ideas from the Christian and the Jews point of view in the Middle Ages that we still have. And also from the other side, we are not able to express our arts because we have, we have been repressed throughout history, telling us that emotions are weakness. When someone says, don't cry, or don't show your emotions, or just don't worry, it will happen, don't cry, or whatever. So these kind of things shut down the, the doors of emotion. We don't know how to handle our emotions. We are able to develop uh, our emotion because during all the process in school, we have been taught to be logics, to be logic. And usually they don't teach you to be artistic, to work with the arts. And usually, when in school teach you art, they used to teach you metric and technique, not expression. And for sure, right inside of us, at home, each one of us are really connected with arts. We are connected to music, we are connected to painting, we are connected to different kind of arts within but we don't express it, we don't show it. And for sure, we all share the idea that artists can change the world. How many of us think that? And even though it doesn't happen. And the reason why it happens is because we don't know how to manage the emotions of the art. We don't know, and, and this happens because art has been separated from science, engineering, and technique, which is basically the other parts of the, of the structure of arts. And here is where we can find also the mistake of arts. The mistake of arts is arts believe that they are special, that we can change everything. But art is not that. It's not the 21st century artist, the one that will be able to transform the world. Are those artists that can understand that art is the ability to make things is the ability to make things from the inside and the inner power that is called beauty, the inner beauty. We have to understand that art will never change the world, do anything. If it doesn't incorporate inside science, engineering, and technique. And we have to understand too, that humanity will never evolve if technique, engineering, and science doesn't integrate art.
the intention here is for us to become artists, but not the static artist, a holistic artist involving emotion, intellect, and logics all together. <laughs> That's the version for today. The statement for today is, I am the eternal guardian. The code for today is the endocrine system. This system is the gland interweaving whose function is to create hormones inside the body. Hormones are in charge of activating or inactivating processes in the different systems of the body. Being the glands, the main motors of energy keep the body functioning. This system is where the energy of the soul and its mo motivations adhere to. So it's the chakras of the soul that give life to systems and therefore to the body. It's the projection of all the dimensions of the universe in matter. Hypothesis, pineal, thyroids, thymus, pancreas, adrenal, and genitals as the main ones. Sit comfortable, close your eyes, and concentrate in your breathing. I become aware of the space around me, the body that I inhabit, and my own breathing. I use my imagination to make disappear every object in this room, in this space, even the roof, the walls, and the floor. Until there is only void. I observe a point in this void and I bring all my attention, my attention and energy focusing into this spot. As I stare at this point, I can see how it becomes a spark and the spark expands into many others 
and all the sparks creates a fire that ignites bigger and bigger, expanding into many directions, shining. all around me. I'm feeling its heat on my skin. I recognize that this fire is the essence of my soul and from it I can create my home. With my hands, I take this fire and slowly I take it inside of my body. I feel the current of the positive and negative inside my body bringing this fire down to my feet and up to my crown. I take a deep breath and I set myself into fire, letting this fire come from within through every particle of my body, being expanded softly slowly with the dancing of my hands on the body extending it into every direction building the home around I recognize that I am building this home, dancing with this fire of this soul. And with my hands, I start to mold the figures that shape this construction. As I design the structure, of this home. I put the colors and paint the house of my being. I recognize too that this place contains my history, my story. Encoded in this place. This home is the manifestation of my own creation. This place is my poetry. And I can see in every room the movement of my story projecting itself, creating future. I am the garden of this place. I am the eternal garden. And me, myself, has created this home, has created myself through these beauty arts that live within me. I recognize then that within me lies the arts that will help me 
to build my future. For I am art in existence. And I ignite this existence with the vibration of my singing, activating it as the sound of the cat I am the eternal guardian. I am the eternal guardian. I am the eternal guardian. I am the great sphinx. Tulbasik. Netista on Tulbasik. Gabrielus. Thank you. 
Nagina 
ወርሹ ባርቲነናይ Welcome to the mother's home. Enough. Gracias. Thank you. Enough.